Hi, I'm Jyotsna and I'm a freelance editor and I also work with the church as a voluntary worker. I've been greatly disturbed by the happenings in um, India, especially in Orissa. There's no, nothing new, it's uh, the tensions between Hindus and Christians have been there for about two decades, starting with the burning of uh, the Staines, uh, Mr. Staines from Australia, who was a missionary in Orissa. He was uh, working with lepers there. And uh, one night as he was sleeping in his jeep, he and his uh, two sons, aged I think six and ten, were burnt alive. It just kerosene, a petrol was poured on them and a match put, and they were burnt alive. So this was sometime in 1999. Since then, things have become very bad in India. I would like to say, though, that it is not that Hindus in general are bad people. Uh, I live in a colony of 130 families, most of them Hindus. We're just two or three Christian families and I don't feel um, threatened by any of them. However, there are states in India which are um, facing a lot of aggressive Hindu uh, radical groups. And uh, one example is Orissa. In Orissa, what is happening is there are these groups like Vishwa Hindu Parishad, the Bajrang Dal, and they are convinced that India should be a Hindu nation. And so Christians who owe allegiance to the Pope are foreigners and anti-nationals and they should either convert back to Hinduism or they should uh, just leave the country. So uh, what is happening in Orissa is that churches are being burned down. It started um, last Christmas when uh, the Christians were putting up decorations outside the church and the Bajranga just came and tore down the the, the decorations, they burnt up the churches, beat up the priests and sisters and many uh, Christians had to flee to the forest and live like animals drinking dirty water, having nothing to eat for days together the government did not do anything to um, restore normalcy in the situation we thought things would have settled but what happened is uh, 23rd of August this year one of the Swamiji's along with uh, four of his uh, people, who accomplices, you can say, were um, killed. And this was uh, definitely done by the Maoists. The police say so, the government says so. But the Hindu radical groups say that the Christians did it. And this is strange, there is nothing to prove it. But as soon as Swamiji, Swami Lakshmananda was uh, killed, um, there was a rampage and uh, the Hindu radical groups have been burning down houses since then. Um, sisters have been stripped naked, paraded on the streets, they've been raped. Fathers have been stripped naked and, uh, and beaten up, black and blue. Lay people, Christians have been, um, have been forced continually to deny the faith. Now this is forced conversion back to Hinduism. They are uh, told to deny the Christian faith and become Hindus again. And, and with, when they don't do it, they are either killed, chopped into pieces. We have a very good instance of this lady called Kamal, Kamalini Naik. And she was seven months pregnant. Now, her husband was told to deny the faith. They said, if you don't deny the faith, we'll kill your mother. He denied the faith. And then they turned to his wife and say, said, become a Hindu again or we'll kill you. She said, no, I will not become a Hindu again. They said, become a Hindu again or we'll kill you. She said, no, and they, and they just chopped her into pieces on the spot. She died, the child in her womb died, and they also killed uh, her one-year-old son. So this is the kind of thing that is happening in Orissa. And um, what is uh, bothersome is uh, that the Bajrang Dal and the Vishwa Hindu Parishad has also been able to influence the intelligentsia in some way all over the country. So people are very laid back throughout India. So they, they definitely say that what is happening in Orissa is, is not right. But you know, they say, after all, you brought it upon yourself. You are uh, doing forced conversions, which is not true. We, the Christian missionaries, don't force anybody to convert in Orissa or anywhere else in the world. And, Repeatedly, we've, we've been trying to explain to them that, that forced conversion is against, the, the term forced conversions itself is against the spirit of conversion. Conversion is something that, is, that comes of one's own free will.
Well, as soon as the Hindus started uh, burning the houses, the Christians just ran away from their homes. Uh, some of them were burnt uh, along with the houses. Uh, but they just ran away to the forest and they are in hiding. Nobody knows where they are. There's nothing to eat, nothing to drink. They're living with wild animals. Um, uh, we hear reports that uh, for some people are drinking, some children are drinking their own urine to survive. Some uh, uh, people are drinking ditch water and fathers have said that they're eating leaves because there's nothing else to eat over there. We, uh, before coming for, uh, to Rome, I, I thought maybe I should go to Kandramal, which is the district where all these uh, atrocities are happening. I thought I would go there. But when we tried, we were told that the whole area, the district, is cordoned off by the radical right wing. And even the police or the paramilitary forces cannot do a thing to ensure our safety in that place. So they said, if you go in, you're going to get killed. So uh, there's nothing we can do there. The, the Christians that are trapped in the forest, the, the, Hindus are, the Hindu radical groups are waiting for them to die there and hence uh, ethnically cleanse that place of any kind of Christians. Now when I went to the Skavi uh, yesterday, it was a very moving experience to see the bones of St. Peter and to uh, think of the kind of persecution that the Christians went through in the time of Nero. And it gave me a lot of hope. And as I stood there in, in front of the bones of Peter, I felt that what we're going through in Orissa is actually nothing, nothing. I'm ready for more. And to think that uh, Christianity has flourished in this place where they were persecuted so much gives me great hope because I know that Orissa will be one for Christ in the days to come. Christianity can never be removed entirely from India. It has all, it's been there for 2,000 years. And today these persecutions give me new hope. The blood of all these martyrs whom we will never hear of on you know, the forests of Orissa and the homes of Orissa are, are definitely fertile ground for the faith to come up.